Hello, everybody. It's the Grouchy Historian. Here we are, almost done with the halfway through the fourth quarter of our American Constitution course. All right, this week, fourth week, we're going to look at why can't we just get along? Right? Partisan politics. You hear this a lot in the news. Why can't we just get along? Why does the moderate wing of politics seem to be vanishing? Do you think compromise is possible between politicians of different parties? Um, this is a very interesting topic <clears throat> to me because I remember the day, right, back in my day, um, you did have a lot of party crossover. Um, you had a conservative and a moderate wing in each party, and you could see the shifting alliances um, between the conservative wings of each party, the moderate wings of each party. You know, you would have certain partisan things. But back in the day, um, it was definitely a much more... Um, fluid situation in American politics. And you could see these sort of, um, I think, informal alliances around certain issues. Defense back in the Cold War was one of those. You had uh, definite uh, Democratic pro, uh, pro-defense pro senators uh, and Republican that would work together um, in the 80s uh, under the great Ronald Reagan. Um, but this seems to have, have vanished. Um, I have my own <laughs> opinions on the situation, um, which, you know, I don't want to bias you with mine. But I definitely do think, and I'll just put this out there, that I think, uh, I, I think the, the political center is kind of disappearing. Um, and compromise is um, increasingly difficult, except at times of great emergency. For those of us that remember 9-11, after 9-11, um, things went along pretty well for about eh, six months. And then partisan politics came back because <laughs> right after 9-11, you had the congressional elections of 2002, right? So you always seem to have an election coming up, right? And you always seem to, um, you know, have, have politicians preening, I'll use that word, preening um, for their constituents. So there's a great deal of voter frustration um, that we can't ever seem to get anything done. Now, the flip side to that would be, if you were paying attention during the first three quarters of the Constitution, that that's the way our system was set up, right? If you look at the difference between our system and a, and a parliamentary system like England has, the party that's in power in the parliament can pretty much do whatever they want as long as they keep their majority intact, right? Our political system is meant to require um, uh, compromise and working together. And people say, well, we can't get anything done. Nothing ever happens fast in Washington. Believe me, that's a feature, not a bug. You don't want things to happen too fast because then people's emotions get the better of them. Remember, back when the Constitution was formed, there was really no such thing as political parties. There was a difference of opinion. And there were certainly this little group of, of politicians and this little group of politicians, and they may not necessarily like each other, but they weren't organized into political parties, right? If you read George Washington's farewell address, this was one of the things that he in particular warned against because they had seen the results of partisan party politics in England, in Parliament, and Washington was very adamant that this must not happen to America. Sorry, George, like a lot of other things, we kind of messed that up. But um, so you don't really see the rise of party politics until about 1820. You do see they split in party polit in, in, in parties between Thomas Jefferson's Democratic Republicans and Alexander Hamilton's Federalists. But you don't really see what we would consider anything resembling a modern political party with a political machine to go with it until about 1820 and the 1820s. So now, of course, um, you know, we have Democrats, we have Republicans, we have conservatives, we have liberals, we have progressives, we have, you know, right wingers, you know, whatever you want to call them. But we have people that typically have a very different vision of where they want America to go. Sometimes they agree, sometimes they don't. Um, but the system itself is set up to make compromise necessary. Now, 
we all know what the definition of compromise. My definition of compromise is everybody's mad because nobody gets their way, but everybody gets enough of their way that they can live with the deal and make it work. Compromise is messy and ugly. As we discussed uh, during the forming of the Constitution, right, there was a great deal of compromises made to get the, con the original Constitution signed, ratified, and in effect, many of them dealing with slavery, which we discussed then. But compromise in itself is not a dirty word. We've sort of made it that way. So, hey, you can't compromise with those guys because they're from the other party. Well, you can, but in order to compromise, you have to have a genuine willingness to give up something in order to get something, right? That's how American politics should work. Not everybody gets what they want, but everybody gets enough of what they want that they make it work for the greater good. And this is what seems to be challenging. It's like, I want what I want and I don't care what you want because I want what I want. It's not how real life works. Ask your mom and dad or ask your parents how much they compromise. Ask your friends, your own friends. Do you, when you're with your friends, do you get your way all the time? No, sometimes you have to do what they want, right? So compromise is a part of human relationships and it can be hard and it can be infuriating and it can really not make you happy, but it's what has to be done. So this is your topic for the week, right? Why does the moderate wing, the compromise, the ability to make a deal, right? We're gonna make a deal. Why does that seem to be vanishing? And do you think that we could get anything done? Except for the one thing that all politicians love to do. Let's be honest. One thing all politicians love to do and they have no problem compromising on is spending your tax dollars, right? You can look that up. All politicians love to pass huge spending bills because everybody gets a little something, something because government's all about the money. But what about other topics, right? Um, let's see what you come up with this week. Um, because this is, this is the future of our country. You're the future of our country. You're going to have to decide how to make our political system work.